Welcome to day, honored executives and guests. I am Burton Keat, and today I have the privilege of guiding you through the day through some wonderful paintings throughout history that we see. Um, there is a general theme today in our paintings. It is chaos and order, a rather popular theme that we see in art a lot. And actually starting up with our first painting, we have the Empire of Light, which was painted by Rene Margheriti between the years 1940, 1953 and 1954. Now in this painting, if you take a close look at it, you will notice something very interesting about it. And that is the light and the dark in the painting. If you notice in the sky, it's morning, but down here, it's night. And that is part of the reason why this painting is known as something rather chaotic, because of the contrast between the different times of day that we're seeing in it. Down here, rather dark, the only light source is being from a light post in these two windows, but up top, there seems to be no problem at all with it. And it is a rather very popular painting done by him. He did a couple different versions of it throughout his life. Um, and well, all of them were painted on an oil on canvas. Up next, we have a rather very famous painting, The Persistence of Memory, painted by this fam very famous surrealist Spanish painter, Salvador Dali, in 1931. Now, in this painting is one of his most well-known surrealist works, because surrealism is all about painting your dreams, things that are illogical, inconsistent, here you have a clock melting over a literal tree stump, one melting on a desk. This one has bugs on it, and this one is over a face. You can't really see the face that well, but you have the eyelash and the nose that you can kind of see. And this painting is just rather, there's no order to it at all. In fact, Salvador Dali has been quoted to say that even he doesn't really know the meaning behind this painting, but rather it's just something he did. And it's just a very illogical painting to think about, and it's a little rather unsettling, especially considering how he painted the clocks to look like melted cheese. So it's something that just kind of makes you feel a little, a little off, a little iffy, almost like the last one. So here is our first painting depicting order. It is the anatomy lesson of Dr. Troop by uh, the very famous Belgian painter Rembrandt. So in this painting, Rembrandt depicts action. Rembrandt's, a lot of Rembrandt paintings, besides his self-portraits, tend to depict some action going on. In this one, we have Dr. Troop, who commissioned the painting, giving an anatomy lesson to his students. Now, in this one, we see a lot of repetition, and that is one of the things that you look for in a painting that depicts order, is something that depicts the same thing a little over and over again. For example, we have their outfits almost all their outfits are virtually the same. And on top of that too, the light and darkness of it is meant to give you something more of a pleasure, more pleasurable visual appearance than you are going to see in a chaotic painting. So a lot of this painting, you can tell it's really well done and that it is also there meant to look pleasing to your eye. Nothing that is meant to throw you off at all. Even though, if you look closely, we're looking at the tendons of the human arm, something that is rather very visually grotesque here, a bit more pleasing to the eye. So up next, we have three paintings of Monet's views of the ruined cathedral. So Monet painted the same cathedral 30 times at different points of the day because each one depicted different types of lighting. So here we have three of them, depicting in the morning, shady, even something like cloudy here. And the reason why he did this was because Monet really wanted to depict light. A lot of Impressionist painters of his time like, really worked hard on depicting light and dark. Now, this one here is a rather very orderly painting because the only difference between every single one of these is the lighting. Besides that, they are all the same. From the tips of the spires, each three, to almost all the dimensions of it. It is the same painting, just painted differently every single time. And it's one of the, it's one of the best Impressionist paintings out there. So here we have the screen painted by 
the Norwegian artist Munch in 1893. It's a very, very famous expressionist painting. In fact, it's arguably the first expressionist, expressionist painting in history. So this one is a rather interesting painting because Munch also painted it uh, three other separate occasions, uh, once more in 1895 and another possibly in 1910. So with this one, it, the Expressionist focused a lot on depicting deeper feeling than the Impressionist and the Romantic counterparts. So in this one, Munch really wanted to depict fear. And the best way to depict fear is with a lot of confusion and things that contrast one another. So the contrast of the colors in the painting don't necessarily line up, but on top of that too, there seems to be an overall swirl in the painting. There's nothing really rather linear to it besides the bridge line. Everything else is kind of twisting and melting together. And even the person's face and the way their hands are placed are not something natural to it. It is depicting a bit of fear and confusion in this painting. And up last, we have the very famous Guernica painted by Pablo Picasso in 1937. So this painting is depicting the bombing of the village Guernica that happened ooh, like two, three years before, in 1935, 1934, around that time. It was bombed by the Germans, testing out their planes, and in this painting, Pablo really wanted to paint it in a manner to kind of spread a message of anti-war. In fact, uh, it is one of the best anti-war paintings or pro pieces of propaganda that we have today. So, the painting is in black and white for a couple reasons. Number one, it is not a very pleasant topic. It is a bombing. It is the destruction of people and their lives in their village. And not, 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 not events that's very colorful. So, Picasso painted it to depict that. On top of that, he painted it as almost sort of a newspaper to highlight the fact that it is a newsworthy event. And the whole thing about this painting screams confusion and chaos because that's really what he wanted to depict in the painting, the feelings that the people of Guernica would have been feeling at the time of the bomb. So you can see that there's just a lot of confusion, people laying on the ground, people in fear and terror and just everything just in a matter of chaos of the event. And it is a fantastic painting that very much depicts a tra tra very tragic event and one that we still use as rather to promote anti-war messages. Well, thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming to our museum. Uh, please continue looking around and we hope you enjoy your visit.